I don't understand Tripavan University well enough to say this will work for you. <laughs> but I, I will share our story. And while the context is very different, the size and the scale certainly is very different, and the relationships are different, some of the fundamentals around crafting a strategy and operationalizing it are, are fairly universal. And, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to take some of what I have to say today and reflect on it and then put it into practice in your university. I want to say one other thing. Uh, the Vice Chancellor was kind enough to speak to me before my talk to let me know he may have to, to leave on a personal matter. So when he gets up and leaves, it's not because he's disgusted about what I'm having to say <laughs> or he's not paying attention, okay? So I very much appreciate uh, the advanced warning. Thank you, sir. So a, a little bit on, on the agenda. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Lancaster's background uh, and where we are today. Uh, a little bit about the university uh, strategy, uh, the international strategy, and I'm going to focus in on our partner structures and what we've done around partnerships. I, I know, I suspect many of you, like me, if you wanted to do nothing but talk to new partners, you could do it. And, and managing time and managing finance and advancing you, some framework in order to focus on what is appropriate and, and what is not, while we maintain the ability for individual faculty members to build their own networks. So, so there is a balance there. You need both institutional and individual connections. I have a couple of case studies of, of things we've done. Uh, for uh, four, and, and time permitting, I'll be able to walk through them quickly, but that gives me some flex at the end. And then just a bit of a summary. So this is Lancaster. It's an aerial view of most of the campus. Uh, it's just over, over 50 years old. Uh, we have 12,000 students on the main campus. Uh, de degrees right up to the doctoral level, of course, and about 70% of our students are, are undergraduate. What this slide doesn't share, and th this will come up uh, come in a, a bit later in the presentation, um, Lancaster is a university that was founded in a location in England, so students in that area would have access to higher education. So we, we, its ethos and its, and its founding was about taking higher ed to a place to increase access. Now, <clears throat> today, from that, those beginnings, and I'll, I'll cycle back on that theme a couple of times, uh, we have students from 122 countries. Uh, the countries shaded in red are the origin of our, our uh, country of origin of our students this year. We've got alumni in, in 148 across five uh, uh, continents. And in addition to the 6,000, or sorry, 12,000 on the Lancaster campus, we have about as many again studying either at community colleges on validated degrees uh, in the UK and close to 6,000 or a little over 6,000 this year on campuses, partner campuses around, around the world. So from, from a location uh, that uh, many people could not identify on the map, and I'm going to do a little thing here to help you remember where Lancaster is. And if you recall those, you know those psychology tests, are you looking at an old man or a young woman when you, right? So, so some people, this is a map of the UK, and some people say it's a rabbit facing this way, right? And others say it's a lizard facing this way, right? Well, <clears throat> I like to think that Lancaster's at the heart of the UK, um, so uh, you can choose the heart of the, uh, the, heart of the bunny uh, or the elbow of the lizard, and I, I think from a, just from a presentation <laughs> point of view, it's better to say you're the heart of the country than its right elbow, okay? Now, now all of you, when you look at the map of England, or many of you, now you'll be able to spot Lancaster, a little city of about 60,000 people uh, in, in the center of the UK, we're about an hour uh, north of Manchester, about halfway between London and Glasgow. <clears throat> but. Where we are is much, much bigger than that. And these are uh, just photographs of our four, well, three of our four international campuses. In Shandong province in China, we're the only uh, UK university with a branch campus presence in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, this is a, a partner campus with Sunway University, over 4,500 students around Lancaster validated degrees in Kuala Lumpur. And this, uh, this is not the campus, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, uh, we are establishing a branch campus in, in Leipzig, Germany, uh, this October, and I'll, that's one of the case studies that I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, this is not a marketing uh, or self-promotion. 
it's to help provide some context for what I'm going to talk about uh, with, with respect to, uh, to the partnerships. So the UK loves to rank things, universities and, and what have you, and uh, these are our most recent rankings from the three major UK uh, league tables were as high as sixth. Now, I take great pride in the fact when people say, okay, you're sixth, uh, the universities in this particular uh, ranking that are higher than us are Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, Imperial, and St. Andrews. If you're gonna be chasing a group, that's not a bad group to be chasing. Now, there is a gap, admittedly, but that's where we are. Now, I'll cycle back to the thing I said earlier about the genesis of Lancaster. In the 1960s, the university population in the UK was largely constituted from students of what they call public schools, what I would call independent uh, schools or private schools, uh, so fee paying Eton and, and the like. So they were the upper middle class and the upper class uh, and the aristocracy went to university. In the 1960s, the government took a, a deliberate uh, number of steps to create new campuses to provide access to the working class, children of the working class, the post-war generation. Lancaster is one of those universities. So we started not by recruiting from the typical cohort of students in the UK at the time. Our mandate and our mantra at that time was widen participation, increase participation from, from underrepresented groups. So fast forward 50 years, two, two points to this thread. Taking the Lancaster degree to places to provide access to people who would otherwise not be able to, uh, to, uh, to access higher education, a particular Lancaster degree. Those five or 6,000 students in places like Blackpool and Blackburn in the UK, which are fairly relatively disadvantaged areas, that's where we reside in the UK, where we validate degrees. Being in sub-Saharan Africa and, and on a, with, with a fee uh, that is substantially lower uh, than, than in the UK, uh, is, is another part of taking the degree out to where students want to access but otherwise could not. But I think in the UK context, I'm very pleased and Lancaster is somewhat unique in the higher ranking universities, Bath maybe there, maybe Surrey, but we're number six in the country, or seven, depending on which league table you want to look at. 90% of our UK students come from state schools. Right? Even today, only 10% of our school our students come from those elite, uh, fee-paying uh, public high schools. And within that, with, within the, the UK cohort as well, 25% uh, are from the lowest income quintile in the UK, and 45% are from the bottom two. So we are not, yes, the tariff has moved higher, yes, the student, the student body is, is a little bit different in terms of academic uh, high school achievement, but through this journey up to where we are on the league tables, I think our, our chancellor says it most succinctly, we have never sacrificed excellence, the, the pursuit of excellence, we've never sacrificed social <coughs> equity and widening participation. And that's something, that was one of the things that ticked for me when I was looking at this university and thought, am I willing to move across an ocean and become part of that community? Now, so there's only five uh, universities ranked above us in the UK, but if we look at the, the world rankings, we do well, relatively speaking, but there's 15 or, or so universities ranked ahead of us in the international league tables. So we, we perform very well in the UK, but not as well internationally. And I'm gonna deconstruct that a little bit for you. And again, that will set the stage for uh, some of the talk around partnerships. It might also help inform your own conversation about the international league tables and how you wish to focus and, and pursue. Oh, and I love this bit. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually wrote the submission. We, we were shortlisted for the Times Higher Education International Strategy of the Year, a uh, university international strategy of the year in 2017, and we don't have one. We do not have a documented international strategy, and it's by design. We have a university strategy document that's seven pages long, that's it. And it has two goals, two strategic goals. One is to establish ourselves as a global university and the other is to strengthen our national position. That's what our strategy says. Now underneath that, there are a number of enabling themes and, and what have you, but that's fundamentally it. And within ourselves, or sorry, within the uh, strategic goal 
to be a, a globally significant university is to pursue a top 100 position in global rank, select global rankings of universities. So the, to, to get from two, you know, to move up the up these international league tables, it's I think someone once described <coughs> politics as a slow boring of hard boards. Uh, it's a long term increment. It's about incremental change, right? <laughs> So you need to be very specific. Now, underneath, uh, underneath these strategic goals, our university leadership is, uh, our council has approved 13 key performance indicators or measures, financial things, student satisfaction, graduate attainment. Two of them are directly related to internationalization. I'll, I'm, go I'm going to focus in on those two. <clears throat> now, I mentioned we don't have an international strategy, but we do have an approach. And the approach we've taken is there are five key themes around internationalization that we need to, to focus on and pursue. And those are our partnership strategy, enrollment, uh, 30 to 33 percent of our students are from outside the UK, so either, either European or, or beyond, uh, teaching and, and curriculum, some excellent presentations yesterday in, in this space, ensuring uh, we're, we're global in, in our approach to research and ensuring the student experience is, is truly global in its focus, whether you're on a Lancaster degree in Kuala Lumpur or in Ghana or the UK. And that last bit, the, the international at home concept is very important because I, I referenced the income, uh, family income of the, of the majority of our UK students. They don't have the ability, the resource, to buy a ticket to go to Kuala Lumpur, et cetera. Uh, so we do have bursaries and, and scholarship supports, but some, many, many students either won't or cannot uh, travel abroad. We, we have students, frankly, that have never been to London. Uh, this is where they come from. This is their background. Uh, so internationalizing the on-campus experience is an important thing. And I just thought I'm going to deviate a little bit and then, and then bring it back to, to partnerships. Uh, 